On the 28th of February 2001, a normal day in a small rural village in North Yorkshire soon turned into a nightmare. At approximately 13 minutes past 6, a 999 call was received, with Gary Hart on the other line. On his travel to work, he had managed to roll off the embankment of the M62 and onto an active railway line. As he landed on the running line, he swiftly exited his Land Rover and rang 999, but before anything could be done, a GNER Class 225 intercity service, Bon Foxtrot 23, which was operating the Newcastle to King's Cross service. Unit 91023 was pushing from the rear. Nine Mark IV coaches were in the middle, and DVT 82221 pulling from the front. It approached the bridge at line speed of 125 miles an hour, and only had time to blow their horn before they smashed into the Land Rover, slightly derailing. The unit continued barreling down the track. With the front driving van trailer bogey wheels derailed, it carried on rolling, but then struck a set of points, launching it up and making it slide sideways into the way of the opposing track. At this very time, Freightliner Class 66, 66521, was approaching at high speed. The driver of the Class 66 couldn't do anything, and by the time they realised what was going on, it was too late. The Intercity 225 and the Freightliner train smashed into each other at a combined speed of 142 miles an hour. The driver of the Intercity 225, John Weddell, was killed instantly as the DVT was crushed down to its frame. The Freightliner loco overrode the DVT and launched off its bogies. The fuel tank ruptured, spewing fuel all over the coaches. The wreckage of the locomotive flipped over and came to rest in a garden. There were two people on board the locomotive, Steve Dunn, the driver, and Andrew Chill who was teaching the route. Unfortunately, Stephen Dunn was killed and Andrew Hill crawled out of the loco, alive but with life-changing injuries. The Mark IV coaches in the Intercity 225 were incredibly damaged, with one even ending up upside down. They were crushed in some cases. Ten people were killed, including both of the drivers of the trains. 82 needed to be taken to hospital. The residents of Great Heck, who heard the crash, sought to help out those injured before emergency services arrived. The wreckage was catastrophic. Once everyone was recovered, they worked to remove the wreckage, which took a very long time. The East Coast Main Line eventually reopened. Now we need to ask, how did this happen? How did Gary Hart end up on the railway line? The story goes that Gary Hart was on his way to work on the other side of the Pennines. It was reported that he had been on call with his new love interest the night before. He skipped meals, staying up all night, playing computer games, as well as this. The night before, he'd been talking to her and didn't sleep much. Hart claimed he had three hours of sleep, when in reality he only had 45 minutes of sleep. It was later determined that Gary Hart had fallen asleep at the wheel, causing his car to veer off the M62 and onto the railway line. Gary Hart was taken to court, protesting that he was not guilty, but this was overruled. He was sentenced to five years in prison on the 13th of December 2001 for 10 counts of causing death by dangerous driving. Justice was delivered to those who lost their lives. We could question about how this could happen, but in reality, the event was an unfortunate series of events, wrong place, wrong time, a chain reaction which resulted in 10 innocent lives being taken away by a reckless and selfish act. Driving van trailer 82221 was destroyed beyond recognition and scrapped. The class 66 ripped off the bogies, it was taken back to Freightliner where it was used for spare parts before being fully scrapped in 2006. The class 91 loco, 91023, later renumbered 91123, continued in service as it had minimal damage and continued in service all the way up to 2020 with LNER before it was withdrawn to make way for class 801 Azuma units. The Mark IV coaches were praised for their crashworthiness standards, being much stronger than that of the Mark III coaches, arguing that the older stock would have meant a lot more people could have died. The integrity of the DVT was questioned, however, as it was simply a copy of the Class 91 but with no engine inside, making it very light and susceptible to crushing. A memorial was set up right next to where the derailment occurred. A Class 66, 66526, was named Driver Steve Dunn to honour his life and the sad event that took place. 
A training school was also established for the train drivers, named in Intercity 225 driver John Weddle's honour. The Great Heck Derailment signifies the last major fatal derailment in the UK history, closely followed by that of the Great Derailment of 2007. It shows that a perfectly safe system can be drastically altered by the actions of somebody else. The event resulted in better safety regulations being instated, and an event, especially residents of Great Heck, will never be quick to forget.